where his office is, is Awoyaya, after Aja. And he said that he's coming for vigil. He will come a little late because he will have to branch home, take a shower, change up, and be on his way here. Amen. Now, now listen. Amen. If a man like that we pray. It simply means he has discovered a secret in prayer. He said the people in his company, they just see the business, they come, they come, they come. But they don't know what thing they do, where the business they come. Uh -huh. That's why I said that is what we learn. If somebody like that we pray, why will I not pray? Businessman, why will you not pray, businesswoman? Anointed servants of God. Hallelujah. You have people like William Abraham to challenge you. If a man that was so anointed, we go on three days, dry fasting, no food, no water, he will withdraw, go to the mount, I mean, what do you call it, to the bush, to the forest somewhere. He had a cave, a rock, go and stay there, no food, no water, and come out. You call, what did they do for your anointed servant of God? Jayola, Adura, Mitiba. That's why we challenge one another. Amen. That means there is something about prayer. That means there is something about prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we thank God that God challenges us through various ways. Through various ways. Okay? Before we go into prayer, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Wow. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. That's where we've been picking our text. The, the pastor sermons we have taken. And this topic, separation to unite. Verse 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believed with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Emphasis now, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. In the church we say, the church we say, the emphasis there is, wherefore come out from among them, verse 17, and be ye separate. So we're looking at separation. And let me quickly let you know something that about salvation and that is exactly the picture we try to convey to the people but the generality of Christians don't seem to catch that picture and until you catch that picture a lot of things that we say in this ministry will never make sense to you there are so many of you that come into this ministry and the attraction very from one person to another. Call several people here. Ask them individually. What is the attraction here? All of them you will hear one thing or the other. And your reaction. Your attitude. When we come together like this. Is determined by the attraction that brought you here. And some of us are here. And they are the most miserable group. In our midst here. Those whose attention and focus and the attraction is only in the gifts that God has given us in this ministry. And beyond that gift, they know nothing. 
And no matter how much I have tried to call your attention that the gift is to attract you to come and hear something, you have refused to hear, but just focus yourself on the gifts. But I'm telling you that even after the rapture, the gifts will be available. There is something you need to hear. There is something we have that we are telling you. Listen. It will help you. Church, the mystery of salvation is deep. The mystery of salvation is deep. Until you catch that mystery, you will not know how to walk with God. It is the revelation of that mystery that lets you understand God's divine agenda. God's salvation started, the salvation process started immediately man fell in the garden of Eden. You have to understand that. The parable we read earlier on in the course of this message, I think this should be part three now also, part four, part four of this same message, we stressed so much on the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew chapter 13. And, and we all know, every Christian should know about that parable because that parable tells the whole story. That parable tells you the composition of the church of Jesus Christ. That parable, the owner of a farm went and planted wheat, good seed. And while men slept, the enemy went to the same farm. He did not go to his farm. It is that same farm. He went and planted tares in the same farm. That farm is the church of Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is a shadow of the New Testament. Everything you see that happened in the Old Testament, it is a shadow of what we come to pass spiritually speaking in the church of Jesus Christ right from the garden of Eden the garden of Eden is the church of Jesus Christ that woman Eve is talking about the church of Jesus Christ hallelujah Adam went to plant his own good seed there and when Adam was asleep the enemy went to the same womb the same womb and planted the serpent seed there that's why Adam is not the father of all living. It's Eve that her name was changed to the mother of all living. But Adam is not the father of all living. It's not all Israel that are of Israel. It's not all Christians that are of Christ. You have to understand that. It's a mystery. If not, you will continue to be stumbled by all the nonsense that is going on in the church of Jesus Christ. It's not everyone that goes to church and calls himself a Christian that came from Christ. The church is another womb. Hallelujah. That is exactly what that parable is trying to make us understand. The world in general, hallelujah, have two groups of people. The seed of God and the seed of the serpent. They are the two groups of human beings that exist on earth. Hallelujah. One group is of the lean of the, the same spirit with Abel. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith revelation. Hallelujah. There's something in them that catches revelation. Hallelujah. There is something in them that God has placed that when that word strikes it, it receives it. Because they came from him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. They came. There is nothing in him to change. Even when God the creator came to preach the gospel to him. There is nothing in Cain to change. Even when God himself came down. Met Cain. Began to preach. Do like your brother did. There is nothing in him to receive evil from God direct. Those same two groups of people are here. Hallelujah. 
But I didn't see. Amen. Where God had discussion with. Amen. I didn't see it. Why? Because Abel receives directly by inspiration from God. How did he know? Hallelujah. How did he know? I think it's Hebrew chapter 11 verse 4. Can we read it? Hebrew chapter 11 verse 4. He said, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts. Hallelujah. And by it he being dead yet speaketh. Abel by faith by revelation he got to know amen now see why were they offering sacrifice because they know the glory of God had departed and their parents told them what happened that all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God therefore before God can meet with you there has to be an atonement and God knew like we see in verse 22 Hebrew chapter 10 or so on chapter 9 where he said without the shedding of blood there is no remission for sin how did Abel know it and Cain didn't know it Cain brought his own by his own idea this is church these two groups of people still exist now in that church the church of Jesus Christ. When we talk, they call us critics. We must criticize her. Amen. I told you the other day. I made a statement. I don't know how many people caught the impact. When I said, yes, the Bible said, judge not. We are not to judge another person's servant. The Bible says so. Correct? But I say, if that person's servant is my father, and the servant of my father is messing up my father's kingdom, my father judged no man, but he committed all judgment to his son. I say, I will judge. I will not close my eyes, and somebody is messing up my father's kingdom, if I am a true son. We will expose them. Even the Bible says the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. It means there are those that are not his. He also knows them. But we are there. They are in the church. They are in the world. Every human being believes we all came from God. Yes. All life comes from God. The life of the animal comes from God. The life of the human being comes from God. So, yes, the life in Cain is the life of an animal. So where did he come from? He came from God. But an animal stays in the bush, not in the home with human beings. Uh -huh. So when an animal, instead of you to go to the bush, you are coming to act like human beings at the home, we will tell the animal where you belong so that there can be a separation before, between animals and human beings. Hallelujah. And so God himself started the agenda to separate the human beings from those animals that look like human beings. Amen. From the Garden of Eden, he started the process. And he did it through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the process of separation started from the Garden of Eden. When he spoke about the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. The purpose of the seed of the woman, hallelujah, is to come as that sacrificial lamb that through him, his own children might be saved. Then he will gather all of them and it's the process of gathering. After he has finished gathering them, hallelujah, 
he gathers them to heaven. Then the remaining ones that don't go, what does he do with them? Firewood. Burn up all of them. There's a judgment that is coming upon this world. That we cleanse the world of all these serpents. How can a human being say there is no God? How can a human being go and use science and do sex change? Change a woman to a man. Reconstruct and reconstruct. Deviance. That was the way of Cain. Deviance. See all the nonsense they are doing. I have freedom. They will be walking naked up and down. I have freedom. Human rights. Everything the Bible speaks against. They are glorifying it and magnifying it. Life has no value again. To kill means nothing. Human nature has been degraded to what it is today. Amen. God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, is now causing separation. He's sealing his people. He's sealing his people. Through his grace, for all of us sinned. All of us, that serpent nature, cross over, that animal nature, cross over all of us. But he knows his own. Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Save my grace. Are you in that number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Oh, say, 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 are you in that number? I am in that number. I am in that number. Oh, yes. I am in the number. Oh, say. many people understand grace not too many people understand grace saved by grace no human being has the ability to live a life pleasing before God grace is God himself coming in a human being do something in your life that will cause you by that walking of the spirit to live a life that is pleasing before him not by your power not by anybody carrying stick. Don't fornicate. Don't fornicate. Those who experience grace, fornication will die. Lying will die. Hatred will die. All this nonsense people do, it, it just die. When the Bible says, if a man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. These are those who have experienced grace. Hallelujah. You can't hold somebody in your heart. You can't. Malice is not part of you. It's not part of you. Hallelujah. You won't do anything that God hates. There is something in you that just wants to do things you know, pleasing before God. Now let me see how many people can answer it again now. I am in that number. Wait. Did I say everybody should sing? Wait! If you are fornicator, you have not experienced grace. You are not in that number yet. You are not in that number. You are not in that number. You are not in that number. Oh, If you are a drunkard, you bribe Pia Palo before coming here. You hear said and they do Vichy. You can't follow us. Come here. Now so you're going to watch us when we go, go home. I am in that number. Oh, I, I am in, in the number. Oh, I, I am in the number. Oh, say my grace. Oh, I am in the number. Oh, yes. I am in the number. Oh, I am in the number. Oh, say. Yeah. 
was ushered in on the day of Pentecost. That is the day grace was inaugurated on earth with 120 being the first fruits. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame. With, with the fire that fell at Pentecost, which, which cleansed and made them clean you up, he cleaned you up. It is born in now within my heart, heart. Oh, oh glory, glory to his name. Oh, I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad that I, I can say I'm one of them. Oh, one of them, one of them. I am one of them. I'm so glad, so glad that. I am one of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Though these people may not like me, no boast on what we fear. They have all received their Pentecost, but Christ in Jesus' name. And I'm telling now, both far and wide, as far as yet to stay. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them, I'm one of them, I'm one of them. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, I'm one of them, one of them. I am one of them. Again, say it again. Are you one of them? Oh, I am one of them. One of them. I am one of them. Yes, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Oh, one of them. I am one of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Such love. Such a sight, how wonderful is love. Say, 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 such love, such love, such wondrous love, such wondrous love, such wondrous love that God should love. That God should love. Oh, how wonderful. Night and day, as I walk the weary way, for the hand of God my in all my life I see that oh, yes. sin and the reason of my bliss. Yes, yes the, the secret all is this: that the Comforter abides within me. He abides. He abides. As I walk that narrow way, for oh. the comforter abides with me. This world is not my home. I'm, I'm just, just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels welcome me from heaven's heaven open door, and I, I can. Feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home, then Lord, then Lord, what will I do? The angels welcome me from heaven. 
anymore the kind of songs that excite Christians people they ask me say I never knew you would answer me this way amen hallelujah two groups of human beings on earth all came from one womb. If there must be separation, it is that separation that brought Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Some of you, you begin to cry, cry for your mother, for your father, for your junior brother. Oh Lord, let him also save him. Let him save, save him, save him, save him. Nobody gets saved by your prayer. It's a mystery. Hallelujah. God has his provided way of saving the people on earth. It is by the preaching of the gospel. It is by them hearing something. They hear it, they turn it down. Your prayer can never save them. Now prayer save you. Why do they use prayer to save your mama? Maybe something you hear. Where did you hear it? In your ear. You didn't hear it in your ear. Everybody has ear. But not many people have the type of ear that hears that type of gospel. That type of gospel is not heard from this ear. It is heard from another ear. Inside, 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 inside. Inside. Hallelujah. Don't worry. When their time comes, God knows how to arrest every one of his children on earth. Hallelujah. You make your own calling and election, sure. Yeah, burden of love will make you to be talking to them, to be praying, but please have this in the back of your mind. Hallelujah. That it is not a prayer that we save the world like that. It is by the preaching. Even after you finish your own prayer, God, to answer your prayer, will send a preacher to that person. There is something you will hear. Or oh, that is the truth. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And so, everybody like that, everybody in the world, the worldly people are talking love, love. Fine, yes, we should all love. But I'm telling you, there are different, different types of love. Oh, yes, there are different. It is that same love that constrains me to be speaking the way I speak. It's another type of love. It's another type of love. Amen. You know, don't be hard on the people, don't be harsh on them, don't be hard. Then you will tell me how you will how you will speak to somebody to save him when somebody you love 
in an expressway, you know, no same motor trailer they come. Then in come one put leg enter. And you see the trailer just there. I don't know how you will tell him softly. Oh, brother, there's a trailer coming. You don't, don't you know you don't shout, don't shout, don't shout at him. Don't shout. Take it easy. You know, take it easy. Take it easy. If you love him, the love you have for him, you will not only shout, you will kick him, push him away. So that he will not die. It is love. The Bible says, whom God loves. What does he do? It's another type of love. So you must understand love before you will know whether the person dealing with you is exercising love towards you or not. Praise God. I repeat that this world has serpent seeds and the seed of God that came through Adam, through Seth. And the lineage continues. Cain also has his own and he's a seed of the serpent. He has his own children. But they mingle with us. That's why you must be born again. The first birth has been tampered with. Has been corrupted with animal seed that makes even children of God to act like animals. That's why he said, in this farm, was it no good seed you planted? How come these other tares are among them? Should we go and uproot the tares? And he said, let them all grow together because when you'll be going to uproot the tares, you may also uproot the wheat. Why? Because some wheat will be influenced by tares and they'll begin to act like tares. Wait, let me also use the blood and separate them. Let me get them born again. Let me clean them up so that when you see them, you will know who they are by their fruits. You will know them. Let them grow together till the end. And so, let them grow together till when? Till when? Till the end. And at the end, I will send my reapers. That is the parable from verse 24 of Matthew 13. I will send my reapers. They will bind the wheat one side and bind the tares one side. Let them grow together. And that is why the church of Jesus Christ is also, and that is where God is interested in. After he got his church, like he got uh, uh, Eve for the first Adam, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, hanging on the cross on Calvary, the same side like the first Adam, his wife was brought from this side, after he was put to sleep, Jesus was put to death on the cross on Calvary and from his side something happened that produced you and me, his church. Hallelujah. And he is supposed to reproduce himself by the seed, incorruptible seed of the spoken word. Hallelujah. And the early apostles Hallelujah. That we are in that planting season, planting that seed. But Satan also raised up false preachers to go and also sow the same seed. Sow their own seed in the same farm. And Christianity today has two groups of people. There must be a separation. They are the ones allow them all to grow together. Till end time. For the past 2,000 years, everybody carrying Bible, you think they are Christians, but God knows his own. It's not everyone that is carrying Bible that is of Christ. And worse still, Cain and Abel, they resemble themselves. They look alike. Everything, everything. Like a human being. Everything. Hallelujah. The difference is only in their nature. But physically, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They look like letters. In fact, I am sure, self, uh, 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 Ken will resemble Eve. He can't resemble Adam. Praise the Lord. He will remember, resemble him, Mama. Hallelujah. I am sure they were growing up. Brother, 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 we are one. 
brother, brother, we are one. We are one. And they were all growing up together. Hallelujah. And all of them were speaking in tongues. All of them performing miracles, signs and wonders. And all of them are casting out devils. Mighty miracles, signs and wonders taking place. Every day they pray and God answers. Hallelujah. Go and see them. They stand. They see them giving testimonies every time in such ministries. Hallelujah. God is saying he will send his reapers. It is a ministry for separation. And I told you the last time I spoke, that was where I ended, that as so many of us, we have come to an age now that listen, I said to those of you who are not here, listen to me again. I said that if, you, if we are sincere, there is nothing in the Bible, written in the Bible, that says a woman should not wear jewelry. There's nothing there. If you look, there is nothing in the Bible that says you should not drink alcohol. Let's show me the scripture. There's nothing like that. There's nothing in the Bible that says you should not smoke cigarettes. There's nothing like that. There's nothing, nothing like that. Now, there is, you cannot even speak it expressly that says a woman should not wear a ring. You can't. You can't. Listen, I'm saying something that is deep. Now, the question is this. Now, the question is this. The question is this. Why does God go to some sisters personally and tell them, don't wear a ring? Don't wear those neck chains, those nonsense people wear. Don't put attachment on your head. He will go to, in the same church, oh, in the same church, in the same group, in the same fellowship, oh, he will go to one. Don't do like this. The other one is doing it and he's not talking. Instead, the anointing is increasing. She's changing husband like a wardrobe. And nothing is happening. Why does it happen like that? If it doesn't matter, he wouldn't have gone to a sister to tell her, you don't do it. If it doesn't matter, does he have two standards? He has one standard. Why does he come to one and say, don't do it? There are some of you, you try what other people are trying and doing, you will see what will happen to you. But others will do it and they will go free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is because whom he loves, he chastens. That you are living a life of sin. You sleep from man to man. From woman to woman. You cheat. You rob. You steal. You do whatever you do. And you are prospering in your iniquity. And nothing is happening to you. David considered that. At the prosperity of the wicked in Psalm 73. He was about to be stumbled until God opened his eyes to see their end. Their end has been determined already. Therefore, go on and your, enjoy yourself now because where you go, go after this. He has concluded their matter. But there are some that he has destined, predestined, predestined. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Predestined. You say, eh, but if he talk to those people, they will also change. They will change if Cain was able to change. God knows. No need to waste time. Even if I appear and talk to them. That's what will happen. And that is why the Bible says something. In, in I think it's chapter 6 of Hebrew. Verse 4. Let's read it. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened 
and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and we are made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away, the segment is, it is impossible to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. They were telling me when they went for condolence in the house of a sister and they saw one prominent sister that had been in this church for years. For oh, yes, fine sister, wonderful sister, part of us, wonderful sister. I was here, was not wearing trousers. In fact, her skirt in the sweep ground. In fact, that one, if you see you dress anyhow, they are the ones that go to attack you. But suddenly now, she stopped coming to church now for some time, maybe one or two years now. She's been out of this church. And then she too came to that house for condolence. And then, see her with very long earring, painted face, put what it is in the hair, and this, and this, and this. And then the child must say, ah, sister, why are you trying this? Ah, I'm not their pride again, no. Not their pride again, no. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, so, and then she will fall under anointing here. So she has confirmed the reality of the kingdom. She has tested of the heavenly gift in our midst here. And then you fall away. He said, how can you renew? Will you say that is backsliding? She's not backsliding. She was never converted. She was never ever converted. Praise God. Now, 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 now. The thing there is this. That's why I said that the voice of the seventh angel is the shout of First Thessalonians chapter four, verse sixteen. It is the midnight cry of Matthew chapter waiting, chapter twenty-five, verse six. Hallelujah! That voice. The last time I spoke, I said, "Is God's joker for this age?" You say you know God. If you have God, you will identify God even in a madman. When a madman is talking to you and it is God using that madman to talk, there will be something inside of you that will acknowledge. Okay? And so, hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I told you something. Those of you, who have taken time to listen to us in this ministry that God works by his principles. Amen. God is not a God of action. But God of what? Say it very loud. Reaction. Amen. Reaction. That is why you will have a need. Does God know you have a need? Eh? But if you don't pray, he will not give it to you. But he's holding your need in his hand. But there has to be something to make him react and give you. One of it is prayer. For prosperity, manna will not fall from heaven. Prosperity does not come by prayer. I don't know whether you, you understand what I'm saying. Don't go and say, Lord, prosper me. Oh, Lord, Father, don't let this year end without me. And then you go to the mountain. You fast, dry fast in three days. Pillar of fire just came back from the mountain in the morning. What are they praying? Three quarters of their prayer is, I must prosper. Now, 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 now. Immediately you come down and God will tell you, I have answered your prayer, my daughter, my son. One of the ways he does it, and he has done it several times, and I'm aware of it, is that last money that you have, one poor man that you have never known will just appear. Brother, I never chopped since yesterday. Brother, help me with 1,000 naira if you can. And at the only 1,000 where you get me that. 
Amen. Do you know God? This is the time now. You see the joker. So God wants to let you know, say, now you they cause yourself not to prosper. You receive prophecy. My son, I have answered you on the mountain. My son, I will answer you. I will visit you very soon with prosperity. I will visit you. Hey, God said he will visit me. How he will visit you? Did he tell you how he will come? Okay, now he has come. And you don't know it. Before you know what? Amen. You are looking at the last 1,000 where I get Holy Ghost fire. Who send you come? Devourer. And yet he said, I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was naked, you clothed. He said, where did I meet you? He said, in as much as you've done it to the least of this, my brethren, you have done it to me. Somebody, can you show me Jesus here? Touch Jesus, make I see. Eh? That's Jesus. That is Jesus. Hallelujah. You didn't hear. The Bible says, he that stopped his cry, I mean his ear, to the cry of the poor. He said, he himself will cry and will not be heard. So, that poor person that came is God's joker for you. There is the written word of God and there is the spoken word of God. Hallelujah. The church of Jesus Christ among the seven chamberlains. The first chamberlain is Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was a writing prophet. The church began with a writing prophet and the church is going to close with a speaking prophet. How many people will recognize? That's why we say, go get the Holy Ghost. So that when God is speaking, you there's something inside of you to acknowledge it. You say you love him. You love him. You love God. Oh, I love you. Go to these churches that paint their face and wear trousers. Women wearing trousers and dressing naked. Come and see the way they talk about how much they love God. Oh, they, oh, I love him. Man. Oh, they will not allow any poor man in their church to suffer. Oh, you know, it's show sure love. It's show sure love. They take care of themselves. Oh, you will love to be among them. Oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's my friend. He's my friend. I will never know. Oh, he's my friend. Oh, he's my friend. Oh, I love him. And then you see, the mama satara mama soto. And tears are coming out of their eyes. Oh, man, they're worshiping God. Oh, wonderful service today. Wonderful service. Wonderful service. You love me, eh? Let me confirm to you that you don't love me nothing. Then God will look at something you cherish so much. Let me confirm whether you love me. Abraham, take your son. Your only son. If you read it, he said, thy only son. Go offer him a burnt offering. That is, kill him. Put a fire. Do suya for me with your son. Hallelujah. Amen. If now you, your only son, your only son, Clara Alu, your only son, take him and go offer Clara be sincere. Holy Ghost fire. You are a false prophet. God cannot take back what he has given me. You will look for every scripture to counter it. Praise God. Therefore, listen church. Amen. Therefore, what the ministry of William Abraham came to do is number one is God's joker to prove to you that you don't love him with the whole of your heart with the whole of your mind, as he said you should do. If there is anything that is too much for you to give, 
Apostle Paul looked at all his worldly achievements. For the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, he counted them as what? Amen. Hallelujah. Hey! Look at you. We say we are going on street evangelism. You say you, you brought a car and you dedicated the car. Do you know the meaning of dedication? How many of you know the meaning of dedication? Eh? What's the meaning of dedication? Father, you gave it to me. I am offering it back to you. Do whatever you want to do with it so that the enemy will not use it. You come and, you know, dedication is giving it back to God. Then you give it back to God at the altar, even with the goal to follow him. Then they say they want to go out for evangelism. You will leave that car at home and enter a car and come. Which motor will you use to go now? The motor to use to go, God has given you. You drop it out. Do you love him? Then after, when that vehicle begins to break down, you escape accident four times, you begin to say, but I dedicated this car. Why, why, but I dedicated this car. Did you dedicate it? There are a lot of things we do just to fulfill all righteousness. You don't mean it. You don't mean that, you don't mean, especially in this church. I don't know that church, but this church where I know, I go talk and confidently. People come to dedicate their children and they will bring nothing. Nothing before the Lord. Nothing. They will come and stand here oh, waste our time, waste our time. And the mother will say and the father will say People will celebrate birthday. You celebrated your birthday last week, come out. They will run out with nothing. Do you know God? You do things just to fulfill all righteousness. All righteousness. All righteousness. Nothing more. So God knows all the categories of people. Make I finish. Make we close, John. God knows all of you. So that he will separate you. He brought that seventh angel voice. Paul said the Lord. Spoken word. First and foremost. He didn't come out from the blues. Before he began to say those things, the better part of his ministry, he was not preaching those things. He was just preaching healing, deliverance, cross, everything. That's why all the denominations loved him. Oh, Brother Abraham. Oh, William Abraham. Oh, Reverend, Reverend Abraham. Oh, Reverend. They, they offered this. They were money everywhere. Anything he needed, they gave him. Then, small time. It's like God telling him, make I tell you the camp people where they follow you. Now, first, he showed him, he showed the whole world the vindication of the pillar of fire. The supernatural manifestations around him. Why was he doing that? So that you will know he is, God is with him. And he stood and he boasted. He said, I have given over 200,000 visions and revelations. He said, Tell me one that ever failed. That was why he said, if it is God, it will be God all the way. Before hundreds of people by that river Ohio, when that light came, a voice spoke like microphone. Everybody heard it. As John the Baptist was sent to forerun my first coming. So are you given the message? The emphasis is the message. The message that shall forerun my second coming. They had it. People were falling, falling down, running. What is this? What is this? After all the vindication, then you hear him saying some things. Began to expose who the denominations are. Began to expose who the Antichrist system, what it is. Who is the very Antichrist he sit? Who the denominations are. He began to now tell 
All those women that were following him in his campaign, he's not said the Lord. A woman cannot be a minister of God. Fivefold ministry. You cannot be a preacher. You cannot be a pastor. Ah. I said this one too much. Hallelujah. It is a process of separation. That was the beginning of the separation. You know, Jesus did it himself. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Hallelujah. Remember that he began to say in the earlier verses, I am the bread of life. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He said, my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Verse 60. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? But the previous time, there were 5,000 when he was turning bread. Using bread to feed 5,000 people. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, uh, Does this offend you? Now, this moment where I talk, now in the stumble, now, then he went further. What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. Hey! It is a spirit that quickened the flesh, profited nothing. Then he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. Then he said, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you, except uh, say, that no man can come unto me except it we are given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And that same process, Jesus Christ used it also in the ministry of William Abraham. Why did they suddenly leave William Abraham? It was when he now began to deliver the message. And that message, because he is one of the reapers that God is sending to cause a separation. To remove the wheat from the tares. To separate the tares from the wheat. Praise God. Three reapers we are on earth in the days of William Abraham. Three of them to take care of the three groups of Christians, the evangelicals by, uh, what's his name again? Billy Graham in America. And they are all Americans. Africa, no day inside. Africa, no day inside. Let nobody rise from Africa and say he's the next after William Graham. Nothing like that. Ham, 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 shut up. Because Jesus himself told us how the gospel will move. As the light and lightning from the east to the west. He said that is how his coming will be. The gospel started in the east. Amen. Israel, uh, Israel in the Middle East there. And it, and it ended in the west. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel. When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he has declared to his servants, the prophets. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Which one? They go Africa again. The next place it will appear, where? The east. After the rapture takes place. When the gospel ends in the west. For Israel that was rejected to accept Christ again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You have to understand that. Billy Graham took care of the evangelicals. And all they know is, for God so loved the world. They preach love. They preach everything. Then, or a robot was leading the Pentecostals. He started this doctrine of, it doesn't matter. God is a good God. Prosperity. 
He spearheaded it with even a university of faith or a robot university in America. Producing and producing and reproducing ministers. Then the third group. Hallelujah. Belong to the Will Abraham. And everyone will say something to attract those he has been sent to. So that those who are not for you, they will leave you alone. This ministry was for separation. All of the rapture can never take place in the condition that we are in the, in the, in the church of Jesus Christ. You have to understand it to, to know why I've been stressing this and will continue to stress it. I am bringing it down. This is the time for separation. Hallelujah. To manifest those who truly love God. God sent that man with Abraham. And you will hear him now say, Thus save the Lord. Hallelujah. Thus save the Lord. He said, I am the voice of God to this generation. Thus say the Lord to my daughters. He said, don't dress like the world. I began to speak against women cutting their hair. He hammered it so much on the importance of the hair that he said that the hair is a symbol of a woman that is under the authority of a man. And he said, if you wake up and your wife decides to cut her hair, she is telling you, I am no longer under your authority. He said, you can put away that woman. He said, you can divorce that woman. Because she has refused headship. He began to say, you don't put those things like you people put all those things on their hair. You don't dress like a prostitute. Put away those jewelries. Don't say the Lord. That was the joker. That was the joker. Hallelujah. That was the joker. And that is the time that the various groups began to manifest. And that is the third pool. That is the one that will catch the fish. You don't talk about pool until you talk about going to the waters to fish. And you go to fish, the fisherman goes to look for fish. And it is better fish is looking at. Big, big fish. Not Pentecostal fish. The Pentecostals, like Brother Matuka is here with us now. They will say, there's a big fish that came here today. Praise God. My, there's a big fish that came here today. Amen. And that is Pentecostal fish. <laughs> because, because their own fish is the person that has some money. But by revelation, we know who the fish is. It is that seed of God with their name written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. That predestinated seed that God calls his elect. They are the reason why Jesus went to the cross on Calvary. Hallelujah. That is the fish of God. How many of them are here? Oh, put out your hand. I mean the big fish, the big fish. Oh, hold on first. There are different types of fishes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Three types of fishes. Amen. Three types of fishes. In fact, four types. There is one type that all over his body now bone. If they cook food with that one, it take, it, those of you who, who swallow, you know you don't swallow <laughs> anyhow. When you put it in, you use your tongue and select, select, select. After you have selected with your, you spend so much before you can have fellowship. Too many chuk chuk. They are the type of Christians when they come to you, they give you no go area. 
You see, I, I don't like anybody sharing my slippers with me. You see, I don't like sharing soap with anybody. You see, I, I don't like noise. You see, I, I don't like I, I, I don't like people shouting too much. I, I don't like people. I don't I don't they have so many I don't like, I don't like, I don't like until when you are around them, you are you are you are so confused, you don't know what to do that you will not offend them. You do anything to chuck you. That is one group. But it's a fish. We are Christians. Then another one is a crayfish. They say in a condition make crayfish. But they are the type that if hunger wire them, they look left, look right. Now man go die for here. Like crayfish. Condition makes you to compromise your faith. Condition makes you to compromise your identity as a Christian. You are a crayfish. Ask your neighbor which fish are you? Okay, another one. Another one is electric fish. If you look at it with eye, my, she dresses very well. She doesn't paint. She doesn't wear a ring. Her hair stronger than nails. Strong. Pam. Oh, fine Christian woman. Oh, Christian sister. Fish. Look at it. Shiny. Very attractive. Electric fish. Very beautiful. Very attractive. Until you did say, now fish, fish, fish. You can't catch her. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At this end of fish, oh. When you come near them, you will be shocked by their attitude, by their character. You will be shocked. Why are you shocked? It's electricity that shocks. You are electric fish. Hallelujah. Then, there is the croaker. I think it's croaker. Croaker or sardine. That everybody loves to eat. How many people love croaker fish? You love, you love to have fellowship with this type of Christians. They are sweet. You would like to eat and eat and you always like to have fellowship. If you don't see them in fellowship, you look for them. You know something must be wrong. If they see you crying, they will cry with you. If they see you laughing, they will rejoice with you. If, if, you know, they are always wanting to be around you. You love them to be around you too. Uh -huh. These are the four categories of fishes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm saying all this not to entertain you. I'm giving you a picture of the Christian faith. So that you'll understand what God is doing. That is the third pool. To pull the fish out of the water. The water there, Revelation 17, speaks about multitude, peoples. Pull them out of that water into the kingdom. Hallelujah. What does he use? The fish, what they hear. Hallelujah. He said, my sheep hear my voice. They will identify the voice of God anywhere and they will follow. That is why why do some people hear me? Is Sister Elvis here tonight? Sister Elvis, are you here? Wave your hand. Come, Sister Elvis. Come and condemn some people here. Sister Elvis lives in Thailand. Praise God. Come. She just came back a few days ago. <laughs> Sister Elvis, you know, I read her testimony sometimes. You, you sent it to us in a mail. Uh -huh. Tell them, tell them now how you, how you, the response, how you responded to what you were hearing. She was born and bred up Jehovah Witness. Tell them your testimony. Praise the Lord. Actually, I was born and brought up for 20 something, 29 years. I've been 
being in a teaching that I never knew it was not actually the right teaching. So when I came across Bright Assembly through my husband, initially I told him he was in a society since they don't have branches because there is no any church in the whole world that doesn't have branches. So I, I even encouraged him to stop. He said no. So as time went by, he continued, continued to listen to Bright Assembly. I was like, why is this man so interested in this program? I wasn't interested at all. Even in church, I wasn't interested. And he knowing fully well what we believed, uh, we don't believe in miracle. So what he used, the first thing he used to draw me was miracle. He always put miracle, miracle. I said I wasn't interested, but there was a day he urged me to just listen. So when I listened, uh, I was like, is this real? Or is it not abracadabra, RNG? That it can't be real. So I continued. So after a while, he told me, you see, all these miracles. It was actually from Emmanuel TV. He said, the miracles are real, but there are no words to back it up. But in Bright Assembly, you have the real teaching. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's because it's your church. But as time goes on, I, he continued with this. I was like, what is, what is that that makes him to be so interested in this kind of church that does not even have branches? <laughs> so what I did was like, okay, let me just listen. But I, I never let him know that I was listening. So uh, the first thing I heard was Ma uh, William Myron Braham. And I asked him, who is William, uh, William Myron Braham? Is he in the Bible? He said, he now explained. So when he explained, he now asked me, in what name are you baptized? I told him I didn't baptize in any name. That they asked me, who is Jesus Christ? Who is God? And uh, who is Holy Spirit? That that was all. And I told me Jesus is God. <laughs> I said, no, you see, your pastor is deceiving you. Come out of there. Come to my church. They will tell you who Jesus Christ really is. He now explained to me. So he now asked me, do you know the mystery of iniquity? I say mystery of iniquity. What is mystery of iniquity? He said, uh, Adam and Eve, <laughs> it was in a uh, fruit they ate. I said, you see, I told you, this is not church. The, it didn't your Bible state it there that it was fruit. Adam and Eve ate. It was apple. Look at it there. It's even vivid to a blind man. <laughs> he now explained. So there was a time he brought me to this church. That was the first day. I never wanted to come. I was so angry that I came with him because I didn't believe in church. So I was sitting down. I didn't participate in anything. People were, during the praises, people were falling. They were falling down. I was like, hey, look at this witch. You came to church. You fell. God don't catch you. <laughs> so I, when we got home, I asked him, I said, there are so many witches that sat beside me. Oh, they were falling. He said, no, that they were receiving their deliverance. I said, hey, is it true? He said, yes. So that was how I continued to listen until one day, um, I had a visitation of an angel in my dream. In that dream, I was walking on a narrow road. So the angel appeared to me with a flaming sword. He said, go back. I said, ah, daddy, we are, I am going home. He said, I said, go back. Okay. I now ran back in that dream. I woke up. So ever since I woke up that, in that dream, the edge to wear trouser was not there. So wear earring was not there. I don't have any skirts, nothing. So what happened was that I keep on wearing trousers, but the edge was not there. If I want to put on my jewelries, my conscience will be beating me, will be judging me and saying, ah, what's all these things? What's all these things? So at a time, I stopped the jewelries, but I didn't throw it away. As if my husband knew what was wrong, what was going on within me, because I didn't tell him. He now put, uh, <laughs> he now put um, yet another day, uh -huh. one evening like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> he 
please put in yet another day. I was so surprised after watching that God. You don't need to be told anymore. You don't need to wait for your old angel to tell you put away. Clap your, your hands now. Those of you believe it. Yes. Yes. So that was immediately I finished watching it. I went upstairs, brought out all my trousers, not even bothering what I would wear the next day because I don't have skirt. I scissors everything and I threw them all away. So that was how I stopped wearing trousers <laughs> and I stopped wearing, putting on those jewelries and everything. So my friends were like, I have missed the road. I have missed the way. What is wrong with me? Am I okay? I said, yes. I tried to explain to them. They say, lie, lie. They can't believe that. So that was how my testimony started coming in. The things I was experiencing in the past all cleared. All the attacks cleared. <laughs> <laughs> and I had now experienced inner joy. The joy I experienced... I can't just explain it. I never experienced such joy before. I was like I was in bondage before. Praise the Lord. Now I'm fully okay. Clap your hands now. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. The How wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. While you are still touching your trouser, sister, and ironing it, ready to go out, another sister who had the same thing you had took scissors and destroyed her own. Praise God. And so the separation continued. That is how God separated her from Jehovah's Witness. By the word. By what she had. Uh, she just cut the testimony short. Very interesting. She peppered that man where where. Peppered the man where where. And she said that she thanked God that the man was patient with her. He said he will even use his car and go and drop her in the Jehovah Witness. Then he, he will go to his own church. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. But he knew that he's not a serpent seed, so God will not give him a serpent seed. If this is the one he loves and this is the one God has ordained for him to marry, then God will do something. And God did something. Let's clap our hands for our God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, physical bodies, a living sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is something that you loved, but you give it out for a purpose. When you drop certain things that the gospel says you should drop, you love them. I said it here the other time. I don't know how many people catch it. I, I drop something. The Holy Ghost inspires me to say some things. When I'm preaching here, catch it. Catch it. Hallelujah. Catch it. I said that, that it is obedience. That is what God is looking for. Obedience. And the gospel calls us to obey. That is what we are called to do, is to obey. God was testing Abraham to see whether he will obey. God is not interested in killing the only son, Isaac. No. It was the heart of Abraham. 
he was looking at. And that same God is looking at our hearts also. There are things, many of if you are sincere, if you are sincere, and then you are members of this church, in a time of need that we are in, in the reconstruction of this place, there are many of you, I know because that is his principle, there are many of you that you have received inspiration, ministration from God to part with some things that you have and give it for the purpose of this building. And you refuse. Some of you think you are smarter than God. And make a confirm like three times first. And you don't know. Can you help God? Can anybody help God? Nobody can help God. Anything God tells you to do at the end is for your own good. Every seed of God that is a woman, for instance, I'm telling you this thing. I say if a seed of God, I remember, and there's no way we can know them. If with, with ordinary eye, we can't know. Because wheat and tears, they resemble themselves. So you can't know. It's by their fruit you know. Every one of you that you have had the gospel, there are many sisters here. Every night you receive attack. Anywhere you go, you receive one attack. You receive some funny, funny things happening. Listen, church. Akan went and brought an accosting. And as long as that thing was in the camp of Israel, God's promise for Israel will not work. Any battle they go with that accosting in their midst, the Philistines will finish them. Contrary to the promise, small number of people there chased them in the battle of Ai. We know it in, in the book of Joshua. And Joshua knew this is contrary to the will of God. Brother, sister, God's promises for you stand sure. Anything around you that is not going on normal, before you begin to blame God, look around you first. Look around you. First, Laban with Jacob. Jacob served Laban for 40 years. Now he was living with his family. He made sure he didn't take anything that belonged to Laban. He was going, unknown to him, Rachel took one of the idols of her father, Laban, Laban. hid it and took it there. Follow them. Laban woke up the next day and discovered that Jacob had gone and took one of his idols. Therefore, he was angry. First and foremost, it affects that the person where they bring prosperity for him, they go. All of you that serve your masters, you are like Jacob. The man, the vex, say, you are now going. Then you are going with the money again you stole from him. Anything he does against you, it will work. Then, Laban pursue, pursue, pursue. Jacob was sure. He didn't take anything. He said, search. If you see anything that I carry from your house, do whatever you like to do with me. He searched everywhere. It is recorded. Rachel took that thing, hid and sat down. When the man, they go around, he said, Papa, uh, they do my menses. I know if he stand up. He said, meanwhile, he used her reproductive system and caused herself. Such it shortly after, Rachel, when she was delivering, she delivered in the course of delivery, she died. People don't know what keeping an accosting around you can attract to you. If you go down now to chapter 35 of uh, Genesis, now again, God came to uh, Jacob and his family again. He said, go to Bethel and worship me. Remember the vow you made. Oh yeah, I've come to remind you. The first thing, can we open it? Genesis 
Genesis 35. Genesis chapter 35. Are we there? From verse 1. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. And make thee an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fled from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him. What did he say? What did he say now that you are going to Bethel, the house of God? Bethel means house of God. Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your change your garments. Why? Because we are going to the house of God. Put away the strange gods. Strange, it means there are some things that are not identified with a true Jew. As Christians, there are things that are strange in a Christian faith. Verse 3. And let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God. Who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Now note verse 4. And in, in response now. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand. And all their earrings, which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the ark, which was by Shechem. Earring, therefore, is strange in Israel. That you see the children of Israel wearing a ring, they imported it. It's not part of their culture. Now, when they put the earrings away and all the strange gods away, verse 5, and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were around about them and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. That is my emphasis. But when they carried the idol of Je Laban, Laban pursued them. But when they dropped all the strange gods, there was nothing the accuser of the brethren could accuse them anymore. Now there was their terror. They were terror to all the land. No one could pursue them again. Pursue them and you will see the God of Jacob. Why? There is nothing, nothing anymore that anybody can use against them. So many of the problems we have, it is because of something we are still attached to that God is saying, put away. Praise God. Go back there. Romans chapter 12. Just a few minutes. I will go to prayers. Now you present yourself, your bodies, a living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. That is, it is the least that is required of us. It is a basic decision. It's a basic Christian principle, Christian action from us. And verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when we talk about being transformed, transformation there is conversion. And that you should not be conformed to this world. Conform, to conform is to adulterate your life. It's adulteration of your faith. We are to be transformed our faith calls for conversion, transformation from your old nature, old style. We are not to conform now that you are a Christian. To conform is to adulterate your faith. How do we as Christians now 
adulterate our faith. That is what James, James chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, makes it a little clear there. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 4 and verse 5. This is the way he put it. You adulterers and adulteresses. Anytime I read this scripture, I used to think that he's talking about fornicators, married men and married women going to sleep with other men. But as you read further, that is not what he's talking about here. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Then he made it clear. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Verse 5. Do you think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy? So, what is James saying? You are adulterer if you mix your Christian faith with worldliness. You contain, acquire, conform to the fashions of this world. You are an adulterer. You are an adulteress. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 10, 11, and 12. Let's read it. First Peter chapter 2. This is who you are, if you don't know who you are. But you are a chosen generation. You are not an ordinary person. From this world, God choose you. A royal priesthood. Royal, 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 not ordinary. Royality. Royal priesthood. He said we are as a church. We are a holy nation. The nation we come from. Is known for holiness. You are not an ordinary person. You are a peculiar people. That is why God chose us. He chose us that. We should show forth the presence of him. Who has called you. Out of darkness. You are called separated from darkness. Into his marvelous light this is who we are which in time past before we knew Christ we are not a people we were not a people we were firewood serpent seeds but are now the people of God in time past we, we had not obtained mercy but now we have obtained mercy he said, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. We are not of this world. We are only passing through this world. Therefore, we are strangers. We are pilgrims. Our time is limited here. He said, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conversation, your lifestyle, Honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evil doers because you don't act like them, they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. Hallelujah. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Abraham told us a story of a priest of a priest that was taken by the slave traders some of you read that story this and they took him to the slave market maybe they took that slave from Aruchuku Aruchuku the story says that among the slaves they caught they caught a prince the son of the king and all of us know where royalty is exalted where we have monarchy the whole world a prince go to England the prince is a special person and that is who we are supposed to be. The Bible uses, let me say even, three words. First, we are children of God. 
but everybody in the world will say, hey, we are all from God. Then you now say, we are a royal priesthood. Then another one, I say, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are representative of a nation in another nation. We are pilgrims and strangers. That is what the Bible describes us. You must catch that so that you don't equate yourself with unbelievers in the way you live your life. And then, this prince was caught. But inside of him is the blood of a prince. Then, hallelujah. The way he was behaving among those slaves was different. In the slave market, there was a way he was behaving different. Though he's a slave, although he's a slave, but he did not lose his identity. No matter what condition you go through, you are not supposed to lose your identity. I know who I am. I'm a child of the living God. Therefore, I will not descend to do some things because of condition. Anywhere I am, I let everybody know I am special. Not to let them down. I don't, it's not pride. It is not pride. Would you drink? Oh, sorry, I cannot drink. You visit me. I bet you get beer there. No, I don't keep beer at home. Why? Because I am a Christian. I am around them and they are talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, women. Because those of us who have friends, you will see them who have wives at home. We'll be speaking of how they dealt with some other girls somewhere. When they are around me, I change the discussion. Not condemning them. You change the discussion. You don't flow with them. Something must stand you out different. They all painted their faces. Your friends. We have tight skin trousers, sister. Do their low cuts. Dress the funny way they dress. You dress very well. And you even do it deliberately overdo themselves. Ah, why are you like this? Oh, this is how my God wants me to dress. Now only you deserve God. No, I don't know how your own God be. If I try and the way you do, you will deal with me. Are you saying you are special? No, you are the one that is special. Me, I'm not special. You are special and that's why you they dress anyhow. Nothing they happen to you. But if me, I dress like that. Something will happen to me. So, sister, you are special. Me, I'm not special. But this is how he said I should dress. There must be something you will do deliberately. Will Abraham say, this is how you should do. When the whole world is going right, he said, just to let them know I am not part of you. So you do an awkward thing. You go right. Do something that will let them know that you are different. And then, and then, and then that prince, and let me not forget this. Uh, let me quickly add it. Let me quickly add it before I forget. Listen, church. When you say, come out of her, my people, listen. Very important. There are some of you that don't attend your family meetings. You don't attend your town meeting. It is wrong. That is not what I am preaching. You are from that town. Oh. You are from that family. Oh. We say we are in this world. But we are not of this world. But we are in this world. When they are doing census, then they count us among. When then they give C of O, will they go buy land? Will they build house? Apostle Paul tell us, say, he's not talking that you should not come all together with the fornicators of this world. He say, if he does that, then it means you have to leave the world because we live with them everywhere. Amen. Because there's our, one of our sisters here that the, the husband had to call me, she herself had to speak to me that they want to make her the ER lodger of her marketplace. Uh, the leader of the women uh, something, market. And then she said, no, I'm a Christian. No, no, I'm a Christian. And I asked her, you're a Christian, why do you go sell your market among them? You will not go sell your market among them. You won't go marry the same spirit goes. Eh? Eh? Are you married? Are you married? No, sir. Eh? No, sir. No. Why? 
Why you never marry? Nothing, sir. Eh? Why you never marry? Nothing, sir. Nothing? No, sir. no there must be something. You never reach to marry. Why you never marry? Answer me now. You never see the woman where you like. No, money is not a problem. I say you never see the woman where you like. There are many virtuous women around, sir. Then why you never pick one? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He, he said money is not the problem. Yes. The problem, his problem is sleep. That's why he never married. Now sleep, the warrior. Instead of you to go and look for wife, you go sit down for house, they sleep. Wife will come meet you there, have you? Listen, church. Amen. When your family is meeting, you must go and join them. If you are an accountant, for you to practice, you must join the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. You must join the Nigeria Society of Engineers, if you are an engineer. You must join your professional body. You must join the bar association. Eh, so prove. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The only thing, of course, you will not do is if they want to make you the king of your village. Because you know what that means. You are going to be the custodian of the culture of the people. Uh -huh. So you won't do that. But that any association in line with anything that benefits you in line with your profession or where you come from because we know all the associations they, that people belong it is for the development of their area and for their welfare and there's nothing wrong with that but where it will go wrong is when you go there the things they do you will not join them to do it while you are among them you will shine the light when they are drinking beer, you will not drink beer with them. Give me coke. Whatever they do, wherever you find yourself, declare your faith. Praise the Lord. The same thing I have told you. I don't believe in that gospel that creates problems for couples before they even get their wife home. Where you go and they say, bring 10 kegs of pan wine. You say, I'm a Christian. I, I, cannot, I, 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 I don't drink. I, don't, I cannot give you. The man is looking at you. Oh, we. Oui. We be devil. You be, you be Christian. Why you they come marry the daughter of devil? Then they marry and go. And then, then they begin to suffer in that relationship. They carry your name, go to their shrine. Anything they say to that shrine to do, that shrine will do it and it will catch you. Because give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And give to God what belongs to God. In getting your wife, go and give them their own. When they finish, you collect your wife to the altar. You have given God his own. Carry your wife and go. After that, they will not come to your house and say, give me beer. Now that time you go say, eh, eh, brother, for this house, no beer. All that foolish thing people do in the name of holiness, it is ignorance. Don't do that. Praise the Lord. Now, now, now it's a different thing now. When you give them, then they say you should drink also. That's when you will tell them, eh, eh, I don't drink. But you can drink. Okay, what will you drink? I brought beer now. Say I bring also coke. And they drink your beer, I go drink my coke. That's all. You have shown them respect. Give them their cola. Give them whatever they ask for. Don't go and create a problem for yourself. Oh. I'm teaching you something. Then come for deliverance. You go do deliverance tire. You don't go ever enjoy that marriage. Listen, church. That priest was remaining there like that. Anytime they come to buy other slaves, the owner of the slaves, we say, don't, don't touch this one. You can buy the rest. <laughs> they will buy and go. This one still remains. Then one day, one of them came, the slave buyers asked, why, what makes this one different? This one looks different from all other slaves. What makes it different? And the, the owner of the slaves now 
told him, say, I was thinking like you too. Until they bought the slaves from Arochuku and took them to Europe. Very far. Although he's far from his hometown, he still remember back at home. I am of the royal priesthood. I am a chosen generation. I am a hair par apparent, joint hairs with Christ Jesus. Wherever I am, I am ambassador for Christ. I will not disgrace my father. I know inside of me is a royal blood. Hallelujah. He said he too, he was looking at that man like that. Why is this slave always different? So he said until he found out the back at home where we pick him from, he is a prince. Even his actions far from home in slavery still showed that although I am here, I am not of this place. I know who I am. I know where. Even if you kill me, I am a prince. He said, he said, don't conform. That is the problem with conformity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is adulteration. And let me give you four reasons why you must not adulterate your faith. Number one, and I will rush it. Hallelujah. It removes power. When you join your faith with the world, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. It removes power. When Samson joined himself with that woman, what happened to him? With that Philistine woman, Delilah, his power was removed. Because he joined himself with the world. The Bible says in, 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 in verse 33 of uh, Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the the, the, the the, the woman that took three measures of meal and mixed it with leaven. And when he mixed it with leaven, the whole meal was corrupted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, 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 no more power. And that is why so many of us, we pray, pray, pray. We are just like the toothless bulldog. You are doing all your vigil in the night. No power. Because that power has been destroyed with your worldliness. Number two, it brings death. When you adulterate your faith with the worldly system, it brings death. Remember, adulteration is addition with what should not be added. Water and oil does not mix can't mix it. To add or to subtract from the word of God. What does it bring? It's a debt. The secret of debt is to add or to subtract from the word of God. If what she did was she listened to the serpent adding his own word to the word of God. Did God say you should not eat of this fruit he said, yes, yeah, so we can eat all, but of this particular tree, of the, of, of the knowledge of good and evil, we should not. He said, the day we eat it, we shall die. And the serpent said, no, you shall not. He said, he said we shall surely die. The, the, the serpent said, no, ye shall not surely die. He added, not. Ye shall surely die. The serpent said, ye shall not surely die. Eh, I shall not die. Eh. So he went that way. And what happened? It reduced us to what we are today. What did Solomon do? Solomon, with all his wisdom, he married 700 wives plus 300 concubines. One man. Of every nation around, he picked a wife. Every tribe around, he picked a wife. When God warned him not to. And exactly what God told him would be the result is what happened. They took his heart away from God. And he began to worship the idols of every nation that he brought their wife from. You see? Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
And so, adulteration will bring death. Number three, adulteration produces hybrid faith. What is a hybrid? Hybrid, their hybrid religion is a sterile religion. And I told you the other day that when you take a horse and cause that horse to mate with a donkey, hallelujah, the donkey will get pregnant and produce a mule. The, the offspring of that donkey that has been pregnant by a horse, a horse is supposed to mate with a horse, a donkey with a donkey. But now there is crossbreeding. Now a horse sleeps or, or, or mates with a donkey. The product, you will not call that product a donkey, neither is it a horse. It is called a mule. It, hallelujah. Look for the identity, it has lost its identity. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Before I come to identity, the hybrid, it produces a sterile religion. That mule cannot reproduce itself. That mule has no life in him to pregnant another animal. It cannot reproduce itself. That is why when you mix Christianity with the worldly fashions, like we see today, what does it produce? If you look at it, it is neither a Christian group nor a worldly group. It be like say, a Christian, it be small time. It be like say, it cannot reproduce itself. It's a sterile group of people. No life. Nobody can get born again in that system. There is no life of God in a worldly church. Nobody can get born again in that system. Nothing. Nothing like that. Why? Because of adulteration. And number four, it kills identity. It kills identity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In verse 14, from verse 14 up to verse 21, of uh, um, Revelation chapter 3, there was the emphasis to this Laodicean church age. The message is that our identification is say you are neither cold nor hot. You are neither cold nor hot. At least a church, you should either be cold or you are hot. And everybody knows what lukewarm water does. If you drink lukewarm water, and if you want to vomit, just drink lukewarm water. If you drink water that is lukewarm, what will happen? You will vomit. You will vomit. Try it and see. You vomit. Water. You must drink water. It is either hot or it is cold. Amen. Why? The identity is lost and it is called lukewarm. Anywhere you go, your identity must not be killed. That's why I love I love the Igbo tribe so much for some of the things they identified with. Wherever an Igbo man is, if he marry a Igbo, his children will speak Igbo. Whether not the woman marry a Igbo man, or the Nigerian Igbo man marry a Igbo woman. Just watch it. Their offspring must speak Igbo. They will never lose their identity wherever they are. They can learn your language, oh, speak it even better than you. But Kakaraka, the Igbo language, they will never lose their identity. Do you know that this uh, town union? Uh, uh, association, all this tribal association, is Igbo people that started it in Nigeria. Wherever they are, they look for themselves and gather together. They even have an essay among them. Whether they, they, they do the ritual or not, it will bear the title. Something that will let you know we came from somewhere. That 
is the evil for you. It's only Christians that want to lose their identity. Name is for identification. You are a Christian. It is for identification. And Christ is our family name. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 15 says so. That name, Christ, the whole family in heaven and on earth is named after Christ. So, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, let's read it. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, he said something. Hallelujah. To Timothy, Apostle Paul said, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. In what? In conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Be thou an example of the believer. Are you a believer? Then let everybody that sees you, see you as a believer. And always remember, hallelujah, you, you, you are either a true believer or a false believer. You are a true witness of the cross of Jesus Christ or you are a false witness of the cross. We are not to conform but we are supposed to be transformed. Transformed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who is a believer? Abraham believed God and it was counted for him for righteousness. To hear the word of God and obey makes you a believer. Abraham, come out from among your people. And he came out. And I will take you to it. He didn't know which land they were taking him to. But he believed and they go. He was going. Go and carry your picking. And offer him as a born sacrifice. He carry him. They go. Once Nagor took him, he's a believer. And it was counted for him for righteousness. Always remember. The Bible says, although Isaac and Ishmael are two children of Abraham, their papa now Abraham, but Isaac had to be separated from Ishmael. The two of them, because one was a son of the bond woman. Hallelujah. And bondage there is denomination. But there is also the child of the free woman, the child of promise, Isaac. And the Bible in Galatians chapter 4, from verse 22, it said, the two of them cannot dwell and inherit together. The bride and the denomination, they cannot inherit the kingdom of God together. There has to be a separation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so no matter how many children Abraham had, by the time we come to Genesis chapter 25, where Abraham was old now, and he had to go, he called Isaac and the children of the concubines. He had to separate them. Even by the gifts he gave them before he parted. I have spoken enough of that for you to understand who Isaac represents and who the children of the concubines represent. There are two groups of people in the church. Those of Isaac and those of the concubines. There are a group of Christian denominations that are God's concubines. The anointing that is going on there are the gifts from God. But there is something that he gave Isaac that he didn't give the children of the concubines. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the bride of Jesus Christ. There are things we know that the denominations we never know. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. The eagle and the chicken cannot dwell together. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible, there is an adage that says birds of the same feather flock together. And uh, thank you, a brother sent me uh, uh, a, 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 a statement. And that is very, very true. The only thing the Bible says, the Bible says that where the carcass is, listen very well, there the eagles shall be gathered. What do they gather to do? To eat the carcass. But after they have eaten, eagles don't flock together. Eagles don't fly together. After they have eaten, every eagle will fly alone. They don't go in group. 
An eagle flies alone. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We only eat together. After we have eaten, everybody takes off and goes with your ministry. Everybody, you are unique on your own. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Therefore, come out of her. Come out of the chickens. Now the story Brother Maduka was telling us the other day. That egg, eagle egg that was hatched among those chickens. An eagle is an eagle. Although you find yourself among the chickens, the word of God says, come out. You are not a chicken. You are an eagle. Oh, glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come out, church. It is uniting time. I spoke to you the other day. All the denominations are coming together. They are uniting themselves into Christian Association of Nigeria, Christian Association of Ghana, Christian Association of Congo, Christian Association of America. Bundle, bundle, bundle like that. Then they come to another bigger bundle. All of them become members of the World Council of Churches, WCC. Then from there, they pack themselves to the biggest bundle ready to be burnt, known as the Ecumenical Council. Where the whole world religions, we gather together into one bundle, waiting for the fire to come from above. And while they are gathering, hallelujah, God is also uniting the bride together with his word. With his word. Christ and his bride, they are uniting together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every couple, young man and woman, that preparing for marriage, the closer your marriage date is, the closer the young boy and the young girl come together. Our home going is soon. And the bride, they are getting closer and closer in relationship with Christ, the word. The word of God is becoming paramount now in our lives. Shedding off all the denominational hangovers. Shedding off all attractions of this world. Getting more and more heavily in our thoughts. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The door will soon close. And it is when the door closes. He stands up. The archangel stands up from the mercy seat that he has been sitting all these years. He stands up from the mercy seat. And the door of salvation is closed. For the next move. That next move is the voice of the archangel that produces the seven thunders. By the time the seven thunders sound, salvation is over. For he who sounds the seven thunders, whose voice produces the seven thunders, has been for the past 2,000 years, he the mercy seat, interceding, waiting for the last bride elect to come in. He stands up, salvation is over, and we begin to know things that pertain to our home going. Then, it will not be things that will be preached even on television. It will not be things that will be preached on the street. It will now be that which produces rapturing faith. It is that which let us know the day we will go. It is that which makes us have so be so heavily bound until you don't want anything earthly again. That door will soon close. The signs that are going on point to that. Let's bow down our heads. We must be separated. Bow down your head. Bow down your head. Let somebody that has been yoked to this world begin to lose that yoke. Lose it, lose it, lose it, lose it. Be it in me a clean heart. Oh, Lord. And renew a right spirit. Oh, Lord, 
and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away. Oh, cast me not away from, from the presence of oh, love. Restore to me, restore God to me, that joy, the joy of my salvation. Oh Lord, I will be a right spirit. Cast me not away, cast me not away. Oh, from the presence. There's a message to that age. To him that overcome it. To him that overcome it. I will do this. I will do this. We have something to overcome in this age. It's worldliness. The world has penetrated and taken over the church. I say Pentecostal churches. They are bringing comedians to the pulpit. To make people laugh. Amen. What does it produce? Death. No life. How can somebody get born again? By, by, by watching a comedian. Totally dead. Church, listen. What is antibiotic? Antibiotic is a drug that is taken when your body system has been infiltrated by a bacteria. And if that bacteria is not dealt with, it can kill. Church, hallelujah. Many of us, our Christian faith needs a Holy Ghost antibiotic. To flush away worldliness. So that life can return. Tonight, there shall be restoration. And our restoration starts from our spiritual life. And so we are going to look at it from two angles. And be sincere with yourself. Hallelujah. You know when you have malaria now, you know. 
You know when you have typhoid, you know the symptoms. You should also know when you're spiritually sick. If you ever had life in you before, is your prayer life the same as when you started? Something has entered your faith. Do you still fall in love with the Bible? Do you still read the Bible? Is it not you that always had memory verse for every day? Do you still have it? When last did you have any memory verse? You, can you sleep before without praying? But now, God, you understand, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, hey, you sleep. That is dangerous, brother, it's dangerous. You say restore, restore, restore. You are looking at your uncle that collected your land, your papa land for village. He must restore. He must restore. With which power will you receive that restoration? Ha! Somebody here, he collected it because you were already weak spiritually. They are projecting things against Christians. Imagine, you say you are a Christian and they wish we project death or just project what you fall down. Baka. Why? Because you are already dead. Something is wrong with your faith. Can't you see? Hallelujah. The things that did not worry you before, now you will carry it in your heart for months. Dead person. Now, brother, any woman will pass. Uh, brother Maduka, what did they say? You are suffering from what? Woman jitis. What did your friend tell you? That, that if your neck, they turn, they look woman where they pass. You are suffering from what? Womanjitis. Womanjitis. There is meningitis. When meningitis catch you, your body twists. So when womanjitis catch you also, when woman they pass your body, your neck go twist. You look. Up. Was it like that when you started? Praise the Lord. Before, before. You are the first to reach church on any service day. Now you are the last to reach. You can do any other thing you are pursuing. You'll be the first. But when it is church, you come last. Can't you see you are dead? Can't you see that you need restoration? The things that you do now in secret, were you doing them before? Can't you see that you are dead and you need restoration? If a man's way pleases the Lord, he maketh him to be at peace, even with his enemy. Why, before you get anything, you struggle, 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 struggle? Tonight, there will be restoration. How many people are sincere among us as you look back at your Christian life that can say, I, I, I want to be sincere, I don't want to lie. I need restoration. Can I see their hand up? No, put down your hand. Listen, to, I didn't say everybody put up your hands. Because you are putting up your hand. Now, if I say pray now, you will not pray anything. If I say pray now, you will see them be looking at us. Yet, you are putting up your hands. I am not entertaining you. I am telling you that there is a separation process that is going on. And one of these days, if you don't yield yourself, for that power of separation to come upon you, you are separated to unite with him. You will soon discover that it is too late. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what Jesus Christ said. Look inward at your spiritual life. Am I still on fire? Is prayer bodysome for me? A true Christian, the most enjoyable period of the day is prayer time. If prayer time now becomes a task for you, something is wrong with your relationship with God. You need restoration. You need restoration. You, you don't talk about God anymore where you are. You're not proud to declare your stand for God. Remember he said, if you are ashamed of me to declare me on earth, you'll be ashamed to declare before the throne of grace. You need restoration. You need restoration. Why are you always falling sick every time? Sick, 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 sick. Is that how it started with you? 
Something has happened. And then the enemy is just going in and out of you, in and out of you. What of the gift that God gave you? Do you still see those visions as you used to see? Why do you see vision and it doesn't come to pass? Why do you dream and it doesn't come to pass? Did you not dream that you saw that sick person that was almost dying, that you saw him woke up and was healed and jumping up and down? The next day, the person died. What is wrong? Don't you see that something is wrong with that gift? How can God show you that the person woke up or was healed only to find out the next day, after you went happily say, thus said the Lord, he will live. The next day, he died. Something is wrong with that grace. Tonight, let God restore. How many people want God to restore? No, how many? How many? No, no, be sincere with yourself. Put down your hand. Amen. Take note. I say that it is when eating that eagles eat together. But after they have eaten, they fly alone. This one going away, this one going away. You never see eagles together a group flying. So now we have finished eating. Now we are going to pray. Now don't look at your neighbor. Concentrate only on yourself. Because the person by yourself may be a pair. Has nothing in them to change. God wants to hear your voice so that he can come and change you. God wants you to stand a bowl of fire anywhere you are. God wants you to note anywhere I am before my friends, before my family. We had a family meeting. What do you call it? Family my marriage some time ago. The whole family, I'm from a very large family. Everybody from everywhere, they gather everywhere. And when they gather, there are hundreds of them. The same Alu family. And everybody was expecting me. The woman that celebrated told me, no, I was not expecting you. I said, I'm sorry, I couldn't make it. He said, we know you can't come. Why? He said, church now. Why will I leave my work here to, to to, 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 to go and, and sit down and watch. So it's a different if I'm going to wait them, join them. Then to sit down there so that my presence will be there. Then I am, they are eating and I'm eating and drinking Coke. Drink, I don't feel drinking for Lagos. Then I left church. I left church activities. I, 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 I never weak reach that level. I never weak so that I make the things of God secondary. Lie, lie. That's what I'm telling you. Friday night, you are sleeping at home. I am tired. You can never be more stressed than Brother Maduka. You know how many companies he's heading? Nigeria, outside Nigeria. You know how the strength of his staff? That's one of the companies that is, that is opening in Anambra that he's telling me. He's employed 3,000 people. 3,000. Uh -huh. That is just one. One place. 3,000. One. And yet, he said, Naviji, Adele goes, sleep for house. When they pray for bride assembly, he enter a motor, they come from office. It's because there is a life in him. But if he was dead, what is it? Now, what is he coming to pray for? He knows the president. He knows all the governors. He knows everybody. So why is he, all the bank managers, then they visit and they come out. What does he need? Then you went to eat. You go sweat before you eat. Then what you say, man, don't tire. Man, don't tire. You don't, you don't know that you are already dead. Somebody's life will be restored tonight. Whether you answer me or not, I'm talking to somebody. Life will be restored tonight. See, we are not ordinary people, oh. The whole heaven is behind us. Thank you, Lord. The whole heaven is behind us. We are not ordinary people. Therefore, we cannot die cockroach death. We are going to pray. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. Which aspect of your spiritual life do you want God to restore? tonight. Please, 
Can you be on your feet again? What happened? Not see mother. Drop the baby on the ground and stand up. Or you hold the baby for hand to stand up. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Sister, stand up. Tell your sister by your side now. 